think and literally ruined the game for everybody else. That said, I think the game that really ruins friendships is Risk. I don't know if you've ever played yeah, Risk. Yeah, I played Risk quite a bit, but uh, we always played it in a more, I don't know, like friendly setting. Because I don't know, like playing Monopoly with my brother was suicide, man. <laughs> my brother gets so extremely mad. A few times he would smash the board and then like all the hotels would fly <laughs> everywhere. And he's like, oh, sorry, I guess the game's over. <laughs> it's like just I a total see break. I doing that. Just a total prick. Uh, my parents pretty much got divorced over a game of Risk. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really next level, man. <laughs> no, nah, man, it's like uh, they both had like one little guy like protecting their borders, and then my dad attacked my mom with like his entire arm. He's like, "This is just like something you would do." I'm done. I'm never playing anything <laughs> with you again. Yeah, it's really funny how those friendly games somehow end up in like the most serious insults of all time. It's like, <laughs> yeah, knowing you, it wouldn't be any different. It's all like, those, all, those, wow, that all those bottled up emotions. Yeah. Oh, that escalated quickly. <laughs> a few seconds ago, we were rolling a dice, and now my marriage is on the line. <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, start talking about some StarCraft. We've got TLO playing as Bumblebee. He's the Red Zerg player. And EG Puma RC, which of course stands for Raid Call, the Blue Terran. These guys have spawned in close by air positions. Means drop play is going to be nice and strong. Means muta play could also be nice and strong. I also love how the EG guys are representing their sponsor. The other day I was looking for the Muslim. I was like, uh, hey, Ben, I need you. He's like, oh, okay, just hop on Raid Call. I was like, uh. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have Raid Call yet, but I was like, okay, Ben, I guess I catch you there. He's like, yeah, see you on Raid Call. I was like, okay. <laughs> it's like, wow, he's really living it, man. <laughs> he probably goes and downloads Raid Call. Yeah. <laughs> Uses it one time ever. <laughs> Just to uh, stay in touch with my buddy. Yeah, it turns out this is pretty good software. It is, actually, it is. And, of course, awesome that they are supporting two of the biggest uh, StarCraft 2 teams in the foreign esports scene, Evil Geniuses and Fnatic. So shout out to those guys as well. So the no gas plus expand ban for Puma, who's going to follow up a really quick double refinery. For the people who didn't uh, catch the matchup sheets uh, before, TLO is 0-4 in the current season of the North American Star League. And Puma is holding on to a 2-2 record ban, which 2-2 might not seem uh, all that bad. But for a guy like Puma, who lost one best of three in the previous two regular seasons that he played in the NASL, losing two uh, series already, it's quite a big deal. Yeah, uh, and I do think we're going to see some very strong Puma here. Uh, this time around. TLO, we know, has been working very, very hard. I remember, I think everyone was discussing the picture of him that popped up on Reddit. When everybody else goes home, TLO practices. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I mean, we have to expect him to be in pretty good shape here, but Puma, man, such a such a titan in the scene, such a great player, and such a difficult opponent is not going to go down easily. So of course, Ben, it's our duty to do some predictions as well. Who do you think is going to take the series? Man, I really wanted to pick TLO, Kevin, uh, and... Uh, you know, in the back of my mind, in the depths of my heart, I think it's possible, but I just can't bring myself to bet against Puma in this situation. Certainly not when TLO is 0-4 in the league. Hmm. Uh, of course, the 0-4 record doesn't speak very well for TLO, but I don't know. But I have faith. I said it as well last week. He came so close though, to beating us. Uh, overall, I just feel that TLO is a really good player. He's been practicing really hard. He's going to Dream Act Bucharest this weekend, which I also put on the introduction sheet. Uh, overall, Ben, I think he can do it. I'm going uh, I'm gonna to say that TLO is going to take his first series of the season over here, and I think he will be able to take out Puma. Well, at least uh, at least we'll have a point of contention here when we get to the predictions at the end of the night. Uh, it's going to be a Banshee opening for Puma, not just a regular Banshee opening, but a cloaked Banshee opening, it seems. Yeah, interesting to open up with a no-gas fast expand, but then still get cloaked Banshee so extremely quick. This is something that we've seen quite often, of course, in... Uh, uh, TVP back in the days, uh, in the Indox Masters World Championship Final, this was a very popular build. You see it every now and then in uh, TVZ as well, but not this greedy, not this quick. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, th th exactly. Usually when you go for such a big aggressive expansion, your your tech doesn't kick in until much later, but Puma was very diligent about getting everything going. Puma didn't really scout a whole lot. Of course, he did see the hatch first, but imagine if uh, Tila would have done something funky uh, with a lot of links or perhaps a few bailings that would have been so hard to stop considering the fact there are only two marines and two hellions okay there are four hellions on the field never mind that's not too bad i guess the uh, puma's real scout is just going to come right now and he did have an scv over here now he just mm. did spot this third base going up already for he was actually not going to start cloak kev which is a little bit interesting what is he going to do with all that gas what you going to do with all that gas all that gas uh, inside your oh, truck okay no, there it is he starts it a little bit later uh, okay, so it is going to be a Cloak Banshee play like we were expecting. 
Uh, third base is building for TLO. He doesn't really have any tech, just some Zergling speed about to finish up. Really good scout over here, Ben, by TLO. As he's going to spot the bench. He's also going to spot this tech lap spinning. Now, this can still be a little bit deceiving, guys, because every now and then you'll see a good Terran player starting the Caduceus reactor. What are you giggling about, producer? Is he making fun? Did I say really a lot again? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, every now and then you'll see really t uh, top level players uh, reduce, uh, researching the Caduceus reactor. Now I completely lost my trade of thoughts because I'm so afraid to say really a lot. <laughs> you do you do say it really a lot though. Yeah. First anyway, Hellions are going to do some harassing down here at the third base. That's uh, that's six Hellions. That's enough to, to Zerglings. Might not be enough to deal with it. Tilo will try to get the surround. Well, I'm not sure, Ben, how I feel about this. I think Tilo's going to end up losing. Well, this is a good surround. And wow, he's actually taking out most of the Hellions. Yeah, I expected this to go worse. That's not so bad. Uh, killing four Hellions. Worth it? I'm not quite sure. If we wow. look at resources lost, it was more expensive for the Zerg player. That was a yeah. lot of Zerglings committed there. 32 Zerglings have, been, uh, <laughs> have, have died already. And there are still six Hellions over here. One Banshee is very low on HP. Tilo is going to try to go for a small counter, Ben. The door is open for Puma. Oh, Puma's Puma. door is open. And he's not going to spot it in time. That is a huge problem for Puma. Massive Zergling counterattack. Uh, he's going to have to pull all of his SCVs here. Where's the Hellion? Hellion is behind that SCV wall, so he should actually hold. At the same time, Puma is continuing his aggression up in the third base of TLO, and he's killing a lot of drones. He's killed a couple of queens as well. I mean, TLO, yes, he did kill a lot. Well, actually, TLO killed really a lot. <laughs> oh, an insane amount of SCVs. Uh, Puma all the, fell all the way back to 28 workers. At the same time, though, Puma is killing a lot of drones on the other side of this map. Ben, this really lot thing is getting to me. And the uh, Hellions are going to continue to be active, but Tilo once more will surround and kill all of the Hellions. So it's Zergling only. Tilo takes some losses, 10 losses. But that was definitely in worth his it. Worker count and a couple of queens, but he has maintained a healthy two base economy. He has done some pretty substantial damage uh, to Puma. Puma has triple orbital yeah. for the fourth command Soon center finishing. Four almost. This is actually uh, really crazy over here by Puma. And this time the Lynx won't be able to enter. He will be able to force uh, this command center to lift off temporarily. I guess overall it's not all that bad for Puma, as you say. Four command centers, man. That's just that's crazy. Uh, Puma. Puma, that's not a good idea. Yeah, he's gonna have to cancel and lift that command center. That is, of course, what he does. Dropping research, by the way. This is an excellent position to go for a drop. While well, Puma army, Puma's army supply must be so low. Actually, it's kind of low on either side. 17 against 24. Drop is being researched. Two two upgrades being researched uh, as well. I love drop on this map. I do too, and I, lo and I love drop play in general. TLO is one of the players, one of the most aggressive droppers uh, amongst the Zerg players Nidus. out there. Wow, really cool. Um, and we've discussed this sometimes. Nidus is a fun tool when used in conjunction with drop because it allows you to retreat so effectively. Uh, that's uh, a possibility. I have no idea how we're going to see TLO use this. He's also been known to use Nidus for the sole purpose of spreading his Creeper on the map. TLO is going to try to do some damage once more to this Orbital, but it is done with morphing uh, or transforming, so it can just lift up. It is burning, though, but Puma will have plenty of time to repair it. What TLO does do, though, is he forces it to lift, meaning that Overlord is going to be able to drop Creep there, and it's going to oh, vastly delay. Oh, didn't think about that yet. It's going to vastly <laughs> delay the uh, Puma's ability to mine at that expansion. Yeah, so that's so smart. I, I have didn't really process that in my mind, but of course there was already creep there in the moment that Orbital lifted up. There's no way that it was going to be able to land again, so smart move by TLO, very smart move. And then drop is almost ready. Yes, there are two tours in production, but one tour just started. This is going to be quite hard for Puma. Uh, Thors are he not... Has four benches. They're not going to help in this situation. Uh, there's going to be a lot of Zerglings, a lot of Roaches. Four benches. Kevin, this might be a game-ending drop. TLO is playing... Do you think he's going to use the Nidus to get the Queens there? He's using Contaminate as well on the factory before the tour can spawn. That's so smart. He's gonna he's gonna drop uh, creep tumors with. I mean, there's queens oh, and overlords. There, so he's gonna be dropping creep tumors with those queens. This is gonna be this is this might be GG, Kevin. Well, uh, look at all these drones. It's definitely. Whoa, actually, TLO's picking up the drones, Ben. Genius. Yeah, beautiful play by TLO, making the most of every tool that he has in his arsenal right now. Here comes the first drop. Night is coming as well. This is gonna be madness. This is gonna be absolute madness. Here comes the queens. They're gonna be able. Oh, there's oh there is detection. Wow, excellent. The queens are gonna be able to deal with the banshees. And TLO trying oh to make... Oh my god, Dario, this is this is awesome. And he's going to even reinforce via that Nidus Worm. So many roaches popping oh, out. The Puma tour, though. The has tour. to run back with everything that he has. Thanks Thor's being this. chain repaired, but I don't think that it really has a chance. There are just too many roaches. TLO. Wow, what an exciting wow. way to play against Mech. 
GG gets called. That was a convincing, decisive victory. That was such awesome play by TLO. Ben, and this is why there are still so many uh, people out there who love watching Dario Wunsch, also known as the little one. He has this distinctive play style, and every now and then you see him falling back to something a little bit more standard, but he is still capable of doing stuff like this almost on the fly, and he made some really cool moves in this game. Dropping the creep while the orbital's there, I was like, what's that really going to achieve? Then sending a Lynx, forcing it to lift off, that's really smart. <laughs> the Hellions run this... Oh man, I'm so lost right now because of this really a lot thing. It's, 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 it's taking its toll on me. But the Hellions harassing the third base with TLO as well, immediately picking up the drones, putting them in the overlords. Wow, I was loving it. And reinforcing with the Nidus Worm is yeah. maybe the, the best application of Nidus that mm -hmm. I've seen. Uh, you, you drop those units. Those units are committed. So now what do you do? You're going to do as much damage and you're just going to be like, okay, well, let's continue to macro up. No, TLO is going to use those units being on the ground to make it so you can't stop a worm from finishing, mm -hmm. and then you can just s stream in constant reinforcements. It's like Zerg warp in, Kevin, because yeah. they pop out of the hatchery, they go into the Nidus, and boom, they're in your base. It's better. It's pretty awesome. That game was brought to you guys by LABite.com. StarCraft fans in the Los Angeles area, you never have to leave your desk to have a good meal. Or Pasuki. Head over to LABite.com where you can order one... Over a thousand, uh, yeah, a th uh, uh, one of over a thousand restaurants servicing the Los Angeles area. LABite.com promotional code NASL for a special discount. Go over there, check them out right now. Try and buy some food while you watch this broadcast. It is well worth That's it. That's actually one of the most fun things. Every now and then, when you're just tired, you come home from a long day of work or whatever. You sit on the couch, you eat stuff, and you watch Starcraft. That's and then you just feel like, oh, this is life. I, it's it's nice. It it's is life. Nice. I, it's, it's what you live for. If um, if if possible, I would order pizza and and coke and like the cinnamon sticks and watch yourself and watch StarCraft every night. Would you watch yourself? Do you find it weird to watch yourself? I don't really like watching myself. No. <laughs> I know that it's something that you frequently do. Wow. Okay. This is so not true. I actually almost never watch anything I can. You I watch, watch your stream every yeah, my day. <laughs> because I play. I watch my own play. I analyze my play. I try to improve my play. That's very different than watching myself cast. I do think it's important that you watch yourself cast every now and then. But it's also very weird when you already know what you're going to say and then you're watching it. Like the worst is when you say something stupid yeah. and then you hear, and you're like, you know, you said, you're like, oh, that sucks. And then like the next day you're watching the broadcast and it's like, oh, here it comes. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't sound any better the second time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so. Anyways, guys, game number two, TLO versus Puma. That's coming up. We're going to take a quick break. LABite.com, promotional code NASL. Check them out. Commercial.